in the early days when money started to become a thing with blogging, um, it made me so uncomfortable. I would just be like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just do it for free. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Hey, what's up, web creators? This is Justin Jewell back with another Creator Spotlight, and this is my dog, Foxy, wearing a pink felt witch's hat, inspired by a blog post from today's guest, Keiko Lin, who runs KeikoLin.com. Um, Keiko is really cool because she's actually been supporting herself as a creator for years, since like high school, early college. Yeah, so let's get Keiko on a meet session, see what she's up to. Oh, and if you want to make a hat like this for yourself, your dog, or your cat, click on the link in the description below. Thanks, Foxy. Just introduce yourself and sort of walk us through your background and how you got here, basically. I'm Keiko Lin. I am a lifestyle blogger and I have been blogging since I was 15 years old and I'm 36 now, so <laughs> quite a while. And it started off as just a personal outlet, more like a diary and evolved as time went on. Um, so through college, I was promoting my clothing line uh, that I helped put myself through college with. And then as I moved to New York, it became more about my personal life, my personal style, beauty. And yeah, it just evolves as I grow up, really. <laughs> I started this at such a young age. Um, the only quote unquote real job <laughs> that I ever had was when I worked at Auntie Anne's when I was a teenager. Since you've been doing this for so long, maybe a little bit more about how you started on, I live journal maybe or whatever you were doing back in the day and how that sort of like evolved. I just fell into this becoming a career at such an early time. But before that, um, I, I started on Open Diary, like that, that's how far back this goes. And then I transitioned to Live Journal because that was like the hot new thing. And of course, Live Journal was more about like the community and making connections. How involved in you are, are you in like how your website looks now? My friend Holly Wang, she designed my website and um, she's actually somebody that I met through LiveJournal. She was one of my post lapse area customers. <laughs> nice. And we've, we've just stayed friends forever. She just really knows my aesthetic. And so I don't even really have to say a whole lot to her. She just will, you know, design it with me in mind. Um, but as far as everything else, it, that's all me. Okay, so you're like you're like in the back end, like posting everything. Yes, yeah. You have a Pinterest, you have Twitter, you have Facebook, you have Instagram. Um, we're curious why you hold on to your blog the way you do, because you seem like a sort of like internet first person. Um, and then also like how you have time for all that stuff. Well, I've always said that you should have your own space. And the thing about your blog is that you own that. My Instagram could be shut down tomorrow and there's nothing I can really do about it, but people will still know that they can find me on my blog. So I, it, I think of it partially as a safety net, partially as this nostalgic thing that I hold on to and I just could never give up. I, I really love having that space for myself, but also I just think it's just nice to have something that I own. <laughs> What is your favorite kind of post? My favorite kind of post would probably be something with a takeaway um, because I feel like you can really see people getting something out of it. Sometimes like, especially in my age group, um, we don't tend to engage quite to the same level as someone who's a little bit younger. So sometimes it feels like you're putting something out there and you've got all these eyes on it, but you're not getting a whole lot of feedback. Whereas like, to give you an example, I did this pink witch hat tutorial for, <laughs> for, for you and your cat. <laughs> Check my description for the supplies that you need. All of the decorations are completely optional. Okay. And I, <laughs> and I was thinking, no one's, no one's gonna make this, but it, it was fun to do. And I cannot even tell you how many people made these pink witch hats. Or they made their own version in different colors, and they made them for their bunnies, and they made them for their babies and stuff. And it brought me so much joy to see people creating something that I put out there. 
And so I love, selfishly, I love feeling, feeling like I brought some value to somebody. You want to go to VidCon to sort of like learn how to, you know, learn how other YouTubers are doing their thing. Is there something similar for just like across the board, like web creators or bloggers? Yeah, um, I would say the closest thing to that is Create and Cultivate. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. What's it about? Yeah, Create and Cultivate is a blogging slash influencer marketing uh, conference. And it has grown tremendously. I remember in the early days, we'd have IFB, the Independent Fashion Bloggers Conference. That was the thing. And then it went to Lucky Fab. And now the thing is Create and Cultivate. And I would say that that's pretty much the gold standard for um, the overall blogging conferences. And they bring together brands and uh, influencers as well. There are others, I've just never been to them. But Create and Cultivate, I've spoken on their panels several times and um, have done mentor sessions and stuff like that. So that's probably the closest. I would love for there to be a conference where we could talk about the boring stuff like <laughs> like taxes and like what expenses you can do like have an accountant come in and talk to them about that or like have photography workshops and lighting and stuff like that i think that that's the space that is kind of lacking in the influencer sphere you've done a lot of work with brands and i'm curious what your um what your approach to working with brands is so I have an agency. I've been with DBA, um, Digital Brand Architects. They were, I, arguably, I think they were the, the very first influencer agency before we were called influencers. Um, I have been with them since 2009. And they helped me deal with all of the business side of things because I am possibly the worst person to champion myself. Like I, I, in the early days when money started to become a thing with blogging, um, it made me so uncomfortable. I would just be like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just do it for free. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it just made me so uncomfortable and I felt so weird about it. So they get, they are the middleman between me and the brands and um, take out all the awkwardness so that I can just have a relationship with the brand, be the creative behind it, and not have to talk numbers. When it comes to the selection of the brands that you deal with, is that sort of like, how, is, how does that work out? Well, so I have lists of my dream brands that I wanna work with, and we will actively go after those sometimes. Um, I make tailor-made decks to uh, cater to certain things that I wanna do to show them what I can bring to them. But most of the time, um, you know, a lot of brands will approach me and I'll see if it makes sense or if I have a really good idea of how to make something work, how to make it more interesting than just like holding a product and being like, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really mirrors like what you would do at a, a digital ad agency, which is like build kind of build a brief and then like present that. And yeah, I think that's really cool. Honestly, I, I didn't do it for so long, but I started to think about certain things that I really, really wanted and realizing like I need to be a little bit more of a champion for myself. And um, I saw a tremendous amount of success with that because sometimes brands just don't know you exist because there's so many people. But once they see what you do, they might want to work with you. So and the worst that can happen is they say no, you know. That's not so bad. Yeah, and I think they, they'll say yes sometimes, so. Yeah, I was, I the first time I did that, I remember being so nervous. I thought, oh gosh, they're all gonna be like, who is this girl? This is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like immediately, I ended up getting several offers and I was like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> I should have been doing this all along. Everyone views the people that they follow as some overnight success. So they're like, oh, I could do that. And then they make a blog or they make an Instagram and it doesn't immediately take off and they give up. But honestly, most of us spent years working on this and growing it and 
talking to no one until you found your audience and you have to be persistent. You have to be super consistent, which is one of the hardest things, especially if you're working a normal job. But um, I always say that you should treat this as your second full-time job instead of just quitting your job and starting this from scratch because it's gonna take a long time before you get there. Yeah, yeah, that's super good advice.